Welcome back to the number five most cited OSHA violation of 2017. This item is substantial for you if your operations fall under the general industry regulations. This specific top 10 item is found in the 1910.147 standard on lockout tagout. There are so many critical pieces to this program and the reason too many places are getting fined for non-compliance. Here are some of the common citations we see, which in turn are the common gaps we find when auditing lockout tagout programs. Number one, we find no lockout tagout hazard assessment has been done on each piece of equipment and each tool that requires the discharge of hazardous energy during even minor maintenance activities. It's extremely important you realize that all hazardous energy must be removed or contained before you conduct maintenance procedures. The only way you can effectively do that is by ensuring your lockout tagout plan is complete and it identifies all safe removal of hazardous energy. One other note on this before I move on, ensure your plan shows where the shutoffs or containment measures are and ensure every piece of equipment has a procedure. If you have three of the same press brakes, ensure you have a plan for each of them and also ensure even the smallest differences are noted in the procedure. Whether that's an extra step or extra measure, it's required to be done. This leads me to my second point, which is training. Far too often we see companies training their staff on lockout tagout awareness and not lockout, lockout tagout authorized for those actually working on the machines. In the authorized training, you need written documentation that each employee who's deemed authorized has been trained on the proper lockout tagout procedures for each piece of equipment and has shown competency in following all of the required steps. In other words, one lockout tagout training on a shear doesn't mean they're now authorized on all press breaks and many more examples for that. So make sure every employee is trained on each piece and make sure it's documented. If it's not documented for that individual piece of equipment, it didn't happen. And the assumption is that the employees may or may not actually know exactly what to do. Which leads me to my third point, the reason OSHA is in your facility in the first place. Likely it's one of these three things. You've had an employee complaint that there are no procedures. Two, you've popped up on an OSHA emphasis program and they're paying you a random visit. And third, and worst of all, you've had a serious injury at your location because of a lack of procedures and now, you're scrambling to make it right after one of your teammates has received a serious injury or even death. Not a good place to be. Now, as with all these top 10 items, there's always more to say, but this will give you plenty to chew on in the meantime. If you have any questions, please reach out to your consultant or shoot me an email at jakew at summitsafetygroup.com. Until then, I'm Jake Wolfenden with Summit Safety Group, and even if I don't know you, I genuinely care about you and your team. Have an awesome week.